Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I was not going to have a video tonight, but I am very anxious to show you this new way of putting crumb blocks together. I am calling it the Wonky Crummy 8 Patch. I think that's a fantastic name for a block. Once again, it's like a starter block that you can put together to start building some crumb quilt blocks. If you are new to this series, please go check the playlist. I'll have the link in the description box down below and also in the pinned comment and you can catch up on this series. This series starts with me just putting together some scraps. On the way, I have been showing you techniques that I come up with to make this process easy and fun and we're going to go right through to me making, I believe, a small quilt. That's the plan so far, but I will take you to the end. What you need for this is scraps of fabric, but look, big scraps. I told you guys that I was going to show you how you can make pieces that look like they were made with little tiny scraps, but we can use big scraps to make it all easier. So just take two different fabrics. For this block, you want four different fabrics in all. So try to get scraps that kind of are the same size, and if they're not, we'll cut them. So let me start with these two. These are pretty much the same size. We want right sides together. And you can decide if you want to go this way or this way. We're doing something very unique. I'm going to go this way. If you want, you can, uh, you know, make sure you have a nice clean edge to begin with if you want. The first thing we're going to do is just sew right along this edge, the right edge, just like we would any two blocks. I'm going to turn this around and I'm going to leave, I would say, an inch to maybe an inch and a half space and I'm going to sew down this way. And I don't know if you noticed, but I went wonky. And that's okay. I know this thread is almost impossible to see. Let me get my ruler so I can show you. Okay, so here's the first line that I sewed. I sewed that one just straight because we're right on the edge. This next line is wonky. See, this would have been straight, but I turned it this way a little bit. It's still a straight line, but it's just at an angle. So now we're starting on this end again. We're going to leave again an inch, inch and a half. We're going to come back down. Now this wonky line is going this way. If I wanted I could make the other one go out or we can go straight. Let's go straight for the heck of it. It's really up to you. Now I'm going to go wonky again. So I'm going to start here. Instead of just going straight down, I'm just going to go out a little bit. If you really wanted to, you could take a ruler and mark your line with a pencil or whatever, but you'll get used to it soon enough. Take it out. I'm going to turn. Now, we're going to be sewing one more line because I have room. When you get near the other edge, ask yourself, do I have enough room? When you sew the last line, you want about an inch left over. So if I were to sew here, I've got enough left over. I'm just going to sew a little bit closer to this seam that I did. But you want about an inch left over. Look at that. Hands-free sewing. I just love it. So that's it for that. Snip. I know you can't see the seams, but this was just so easy. You saw I didn't even have to hold it. If we were doing individual strips, you know, you have to hold those. This is just up and down, up and down. I'm going to try to do it this way. You're looking at it like I'm looking at it. I'm going to draw on those seams so you can see them. Hang on. I guess I can ruin a block for the sake of a tutorial. I'm sure it won't ruin it. Okay, so you can see this is where I started, on the edge. Then I have this line going kind of at a slant. This one's kind of straight up and down, kind of at a slant kind of straight up and down. This last line, that's where we want, you know, anywhere from like three quarters of an inch to an inch left over. This line is good. We're not doing anything to this line. This stitch line, we're going to cut to the right of it, about a quarter of an inch. 
or less if you want to get a little closer. So I'm just cutting to the right of that. Now I'm going to do the same to this. I'm cutting to the right of that line. Same on this. Same here. Now I'm going to go press all these open. Now we have these awesome strip sets that were so incredibly easy to make and some of them are a bit wonky, which we love, do love. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and just continue making these. You grab two pieces of fabric and you put them together just like I did. In no time you can knock out a whole bunch of these strips. And it doesn't matter if they're, you know, long or short, all that gets trimmed after the fact. So let's um, just do this one more time together. I'm taking these two strips. They're kind of the same height, but one is longer. So I'm going to go ahead and trim that just so I know I'm not sewing off the edge of anything. And here we go again. Start just like normal. I'm just going to go down this edge. Turn, 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 go wonky if you want. Well, I can't even see where I've sewn. <laughs> I actually have to feel. Okay. Turn. You know, if you wanted, you could draw your lines first if that would help you and just sew right on the line. That would be cool. You could do it with a chalk or with any kind of, uh, you know, fabric marker. And I have room to go one more time. Now, easy. So easy. All right, again, I am skipping my first thread. Gee whiz, I can't see it all. All right, I'm going to cut to the right. It's always find your thread and cut to the right of it. All right, I'm going to mark these again. I mean, seriously, even I couldn't see that. I just used a pencil this time. There's my line, I'm cutting to the right side of it. And to this one too, always to the right. Always to the right. Okay, I'm going to go press those open. And we have all of these. Now I always press to one side and with crumb quilting I don't care which side it goes on. I know there are some that they insist on opening the seam. You're going to have a hard time when you're working with small pieces to you know just do that. It, it's a lot. You know, the pieces are made so quickly, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time pressing them. There's nothing wrong with pressing to the side. As a matter of fact, it makes for a much stronger seam. When you press a seam open, your threads have nothing behind it. It's just threads there. When you press to the side, you have more support for the threads. And in the olden days, they would press to the side so the batting would not come through the hand stitching. Bet you didn't know that, but they did. Because if it was open, the batting could come through and it just made the threads weak. Now you can stop here if you want. You just learned how to make a whole bunch of strip sets quick and easy with big pieces of fabric and you're making it look like you started out with some smaller strips, but I'm going to go one step further for you. Take two pieces, we'll use the two that I just made, put them together any way. If they're both wonky, and these kind of are, there's a wide bottom here, a wide bottom here, match narrow bottom to wide bottom, and then narrow bottom to wide bottom. It'll make a more square kind of square, or rectangle. I'm going to sew those together. We have this. Let's do this again with all other prints. So let's see, I'll use one of these. Ooh, and let's use one of these. Which way do I want to go? I want to go this way. A little bit more even. 
Now what you could do is just, you know, sit and put two more together and pass them through and don't cut your thread. Put two more together, pass them through. Just do some chain piecing. You'll get so much done so much more quicker and it's just so much easier. So now we have this happening. Now this is not as tall as this one. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> this one is much narrower. I was not prepared for this. <laughs> But we're going to do something different. Instead of doing a wonky 8 patch, we're doing a wonky maybe 10 patch. We kind of want these pieces to be the same this way. First of all, put your rows, your strips, whatever going this way. And this one too. So you can see we don't have enough here. We have something else that's narrow. Alright, we'll add one of these here because we're just coming up a little bit short. So let's throw this guy on here. So we want to put two blocks together now this way. We want the stripes going this way and also this one. You can trim one side if you want just to make it easier. Let's put these two together like this. We're going to do the same thing but we're going to do it on our matched up strip sets. So I'm going to sew down the edge. I'm going to turn and I'm going to leave a little space. I'm going to come back. I'm going to turn, leave a space and come back. And I'm out of bobbin thread. Okay, I'm back. And I'm going to stop there. So we just did the same exact thing, only we did it with strip sets. That's my handy dandy pencil so I can mark these lines. All right, I can see them. Again, always hold the finished edge to the right. This is your open end on this side. That first line of stitching, we ignore that. We go to the second line and we cut to the right of it. And we do that again, cut to the right of the next line and cut to the right of this line and we'll go press those open and look how cool is that you can trim your edges if you want I don't generally trim right away I trim when I use it you know these pieces might be put in a box and not used for a while why trim now I trim as I go but I'm just letting you know you certainly can trim it if you want then when you have like a bunch of these made, you can start putting these together. You could make an entire crumb quilt with just little pieces like this. It's more of a postage stamp quilt. And you can use this same method of making strip sets with big pieces of fabric. Like you could take long quarters and you could sew on those just like we did on these and then just cut and then open and press and you have a whole bunch of strip sets. It's an especially good method for wonky because you don't have to worry if you're, you know, sewing off kilter. You actually like that. Wonky is perfect for scrappy quilts and crazy quilts and crumb quilts, all that. And for wonky strip quilts. So these are the first ones that I did. I happened to have pieces that were about the same width, so it made an eight patch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now these are a 10 patch. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I love that. And then like I could put these two together. Just what a fun way to make blocks. Especially if you want to make a quilt with like just some 3 inch blocks. In no time you can cut a 3 inch block out of that. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I will come back with as many tips as I can the next time. I hope to... um have enough made that I can cut some more blocks and it won't be long I will be thinking about putting them together and we will come up with a fun way and easy way to do that too so please go watch the playlist and please subscribe so you don't miss any more of these videos thank you so much for watching and I will be back with more soon bye